Well, so uh, this is a part three in which we're going to discuss about uh, monopsony. Uh, <clears throat> so let's start. Uh, in this particular uh, part, we're going to discuss monopsony, uh, monopsony power and limiting market power. And that's what we call it as an entry trust laws. Uh, monopsony power buyer's ability to affect the price of a good or there is also one uh, related uh, thing is oligo uh, oligopsony oligopsony means that if there are few buyers so for a buyer we have a marginal value and marginal expenditure now marginal value is just like a demand curve like additional benefit derived from purchasing one more unit of a good and marginal expenditure is an additional cost of buying one more unit of a good. So that's a, how much expenditure they have to use. Or, or in, in other words, we can say that it's a uh, uh, upward sloping a marginal expenditure curve. So average expenditure price paid per unit of a good. Uh, now, if we uh, just look at uh, these uh, monopsony uh, from a competitive market of point, so then how they look like. So competitive buyer compared to competitive seller. So in uh, figure A, like this way, we see that this is marginal expenditure and average expenditure, just like um, average revenue and minor revenue. For a competitive firm, they are all, e uh, both these things are equal. And here we have a demand curve, there we have a supply curve. Because there's a seller, this is a buyer. So this is a buyer buyer <coughs> and seller right and they equate this demand curve with the marginal expenditure curve and find out the quantity a seller equate the uh, competitive seller equate the marginal cost with the average or a marginal revenue and by this way they find out the so therefore, the minor expenditure and average revenue are constant and equal. So quantity purchase is found by equating price to the minor value or demand curve. Uh, competitive seller also takes price as given and minor revenue and minor revenue, uh, average revenue are constant and equal and quantity sold is found by equating price to the minor cost. Now, monopsonist buyer uh, is, this is a competitive. Now, this is a monopolist one. So, a uh, monopsonist buyer has a marginal value curve, which is simply a demand curve. Uh, the market supply curve is monopsonist average expenditure curve. This one is supply curve. And this one is the demand curve. So if it is a competitive market, they decided this, but it is a monopsony. There's only a one buyer. So they decided up till this point that the marginal expenditure because average expenditure is rising, so marginal expenditure lies above it. So the, the monopolist purchase quantity based on marginal expenditure and marginal value, so they find it out this much quantity. This is a monopsonist quantity. And the price they're gonna pay is this. This is a monopsonist price. So the monopsonist purchase quantity QM, where the marginal expenditure and marginal value demand intersects. So the price paid per unit PM is the found from the average expenditure supply curve. In a competitive market, price and quantity QC, PC and QC is this. So the monopsonist is buying less than the competitive market. So they are found at a point where average expenditure supply and the marginal value demand curve intersect. Now monopsony and monopsony uh, monopoly compared when we compare so this one is a monopoly and this is monopsony monopsony right monopoly and monopsony so monopolist is determining the quantity uh, by margin uh, by equating marginal cost with the minor revenue and then find out the price by equating uh, this with the mar uh, average revenue curve 
right, or on demand. On the other hand, monopsonist is equating the marginal expenditure with the marginal value and find out the quantity and figure out the price by equating with the average expenditure. Monopsony power, uh, how they get the power and power is dependent all on the elasticity. So here is an example, like in the first uh, panel, we see there's a graph and that graph is the average expenditure or marginal expenditure. The average expenditure is very flat, means elastic. Uh, here the uh, average expenditure curve is word, uh, uh, steeper. It means it's inelastic. So when they, char when they decide uh, in these two markets, uh, the price they, they are willing to pay or they, the price they are going to pay uh, is little higher than the equal uh, than the competitive market price but in this case it's very high and the reason behind is only elasticity so how what are the sources of a monopsony power we can see elasticity of a market supply uh, if only one buyer is in the market a pure monopsonist uh, its monopsony power is completely determined by the elasticity of a market supply if the supply is highly elastic, monopsony power is small and there's a little gain in being the only buyer. Number of buyers, when the number of buyers is very large, no single buyer can have much influence over price. Uh, thus, each buyer faces an extremely elastic supply curve so that the market is almost completely competitive. Interaction among the buyers, uh, if four buyers in a market compete aggressively they will bid up to the price close to the marginal value of the product and will have a little monopsony power on the other hand if they these those buyers compete less aggressively or collude price will not be bid up very much and the buyers uh, degree of monopsony power might be nearly as high, as high as if they were only one buyer uh, what is the cost of the monopsony for the society or a social cost of a monopsony? We see that there is a deadweight loss, very similar like the case of a monopoly. This, These two B and C are the uh, combined deadweight loss for the society being a, uh, a, a, um, for the existence of this monopsony market. The shaded rectangle and the triangle shows a change in the buyers and sellers surpluses. So in this case, buyer surplus is increased by A uh, minus C uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, producer surplus falls by A uh, plus C. So uh, A minus B uh, is a, a decrease in consumer or a buyer surplus and uh, the producer's fall is A plus C. So by this way, A is gonna be eliminated uh, because there is a change shifting from uh, buyer to seller. Uh, but at the same time, uh, A, uh, B, and C is the deadweight loss. Uh, bilateral monopolies can also be possible that one is selling. But in that case, what is going to happen is that they are uh, counteracting each other. Like the powers are contracting, they negotiate with each other. Uh, so in that case, uh, because of the powers, uh, both have a power, so they negotiate. And by this way, uh, not exactly very close to, but they are very close to the competitive market. So that's a tendency uh, when there's a bilateral. Uh, the real life example is uh, <clears throat> uh, Monopsony is working in uh, industries where uh, the uh, buyer is like a few uh, automakers. Uh, they are getting from uh, vendors who are pro producing the goods very particular to that, uh, particular to their use. And also in some towns, there's only one a large factory and they are the only employer uh, so they work like a monopsony because they are the buyer of a labor uh, from the neighborhood. So by this way, they, they can convert into a monopsony. The role of a monopsony power was investigated to determine the extent to which variation in price cost margin could be attributed to variation in monopsony power. The study found that buyer's monopsony power had an important effect on the price out uh, price cost margins of sellers. So industries where only four or five buyers account for for all or nearly all sales, 
the priced cost margins of sellers would be average be as much as 10 percent point uh, lower than in a comparable industry with the hundreds of buyers accounting for sales. Uh, each major car producer in the United States typically buys an individual part from at least three and as uh, and often as much as a dozen suppliers. So for a specialized part, a single auto uh, company may be the only buyers for a specialized auto part, like for something you, they are producing for uh, Honda or a Toyota. So that is very particular. For them. As a result, the automobile companies have a considerable monopsony power. Not surprisingly, producers of a parts and components usually have a little or no monopoly power. Now, how we can deal this uh, with this uh, monopoly or a monopsony power? So, excessive market power harms potential purchasers and raises problem of equity and fairness. In addition, market power reduces output, which leads to a deadweight loss. So, in theory, a firm's excess profit could be taxed away, but redistribution uh, distribution of the firm's profit is often impractical. To limit the power market power of a natural monopoly, such as an electric utility company, direct price regulation is the answer. Like all over the world, these utilities are provided by the monopolies. Uh, every city or every uh, region has uh, their own uh, uh, electricity or a gas uh, providers, natural gas providers. Uh, or <clears throat> Now these monopolies are uh, natural monopolies uh, because they cannot uh, uh, make it uh, economical or uh, achieve the economies of scale if there are many firms for providing the same uh, utility. But they are not uh, working like a pure monopolist. The reason is that their price are controlled through a regulator. And the regulator can be a government agency or a government itself. So whenever they want to increase the price, they have to get a permission from that regulator or the. On the other hand, uh, there are some antitrust laws, uh, rules and regulations prohibiting actions that restrain or are likely to restrain competition. So it is important to stress that while there are limitations such as colluding with other firms, in general, it is not illegal to be monopolist or to have a market power. On the contrary, we have uh, seen that patent and copyright laws protect the monopoly position of the firms that develop unique innovations. So with the certainty, we cannot say that uh, the monopolist, uh, the monopoly or a monopsony is not good for the economy as well as it is not uh, good for the economy. It is not good or not good, we don't, we cannot say with certainty. The reason is that uh, we observe that monopoly is very helpful in developing new research, new medicines, new innovation uh, in every field of the uh, economy. So innovation is only uh, promoted or protected and uh, motivated through uh, monopoly law, like a copyright patent or a, uh, other uh, ways of production, trademark and all these things. Uh, um, but at the same time, we see that the monopoly is also creating a deadweight loss. So that's the reason that we can say that uh, it is very uh, not uh, with the certainty we can say that so thank you very much uh, this is the uh, uh, topic i want to cover with market power monopoly and monopsony i hope you enjoyed it thank you very much bye